Hi there guys, welcome back. Um, just basically starting a new little tutorial video here. Um, this is something new I'm working on at the moment. It's the uh, Tartarus pattern uh, terminators from Forgeworld. Uh, as you see, I've already built the models up, um, trimmed them down, prepped them ready for uh, for painting. Um, I've, I've now built them up. I've decided I'm actually going to do a little bit of reposing on a couple of these as well, just so I can do a bit more scenic bases for them. Um, I mean the kit's absolutely fantastic, you'll see sort of the detail on them is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'll bring that in a bit closer for you. You can see shoulder pads are all not, got a lot of nice detail on them. Um, I love this as well, it's a different little heavy flamer, it's a bit different to the normal heavy flamers that you have on uh, Terminators. Um, the reason I love these Terminators really is uh, they're so close to the Contemptor Dreadnoughts. Um, obviously, with my uh, Astral Claws, I've got uh, I've got a couple of Contemptors in there, so it really sort of keeps a nice theme going on. Um, you see, this guy's going to be the sergeant. He's got there a power sword. I've chipped that up a little bit to make it look used. Um, now, one one little annoyance I had with these models, although there was a couple of sort of mold lines and things I had to remove, which were a little bit tricky. I had to rebuild a couple of bits. Was um, on, on the top of every single one for some strange reason there's a tiny tiny little uh, little pin prick of a, of a hole um, I'm not really sure why um, but I've had to fill it in on all the, on all the models which I thought was very strange um, but uh, yeah I mean this is what I'm going to be working on now so basically what I'm going to do I'm going to go away um, I'm going to go and get some uh, hot water so we can repose these obviously the heads going to do all of these separate so that we can get a nice finish on the heads. Um, I might put in, uh, basically dig one of, the, one, of the, one of the bodies out a bit and put a full head in without a helmet. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is what we're going to be working on. I'll go away now. I'm going to uh, get some hot water to repose these, come back and show you how we repose them. Cheers, see you soon. Hi guys, back again. I've just been down, got myself some boiling water you'll see in the bowl there. Um, now, what you need to do to repose these guys, I always use a pair of tweezers because uh, obviously boiling water, you don't want to get yourself some burns, all right? So just get a nice grip somewhere big on the model, um, like that there. Um, I'm literally going to dip the parts that I want to repose into the water, leave it in there just for the water to, the heat of the water to soak all the way through. Now, I would obviously suggest, like I say, using boiling water because the parts on these are uh, are a bit thicker take a little while to absorb the heat so just leave that in there for a minute <laughs> it doesn't really matter that I've already uh, that I've already built the model because super glue is fine going in water anyway so just wait for that to go go nice and soft. Let's just try that now. So we should find that's it. Yep, yeah, the resin's getting nice and soft, so we can we'll be able to bend that now. What I'm going to do with this guy? Uh, got this barrel on the base here. Obviously, there is going to be a bit more on that base, but I want him to have one leg up onto the barrel, um, as if he's kind of kicked the barrel down and shooting over the top of it. There we go, so just shake it off. Now, we should just be able to put one foot on the barrel where we want it. Bend his knee, so we want the whole leg to come up. So you'll see we can put the leg up like that. Comes through quite nice. And then the knee is going to be going down. I think we might need a little bit more time in the, in the water. See, just like that, look, so you, nearly there. I'm just going to need a little bit more time on the heat so that we can bend it just a little bit more. So back into the water he goes. Just lean him up against the edge in the water there. Just let him soak that up for a little while. Give it another try. Shake it off again. 
you'll see when you put it back in the water it does try and straighten itself back up to the original position so you need to try and get it done with as least sort of attempts as possible really so you see it's coming up so we should be able to Spread his legs a little bit just to flatten the feet out. And you'll see he's now nice and uh, one leg up, one leg down sort of thing. So once this once this base has got a couple more bits on it to level the other foot up um, and obviously sink the barrel in a bit, he's going to be at a nice sort of level to have his foot up over the top of something. Um, just gives it a bit more sort of a dynamic sort of pose you know um, now one way you can repose these as well once you've done the hot water um, have cold water and dip it straight in afterwards um, that will obviously uh, sort of fix it in place a lot quicker all right so once I've done this guys I'll come back and show you what the results are so you see Hi guys, back again. Um, so whilst I've been away, I've um, done a couple of little bits. Uh, obviously this one that we repost. Um, sorry, it's a little bit dark where I've sprayed them black as well, another thing I've done. Um, so this one's reposed. You can see he's got a nice little sort of knee up pose there. Um, what I'm going to do from here on out is just work on one model at a time. So obviously you can uh, you can see the full the full whack whilst uh, whilst we're doing one model as opposed to obviously doing a bit by bit on each on each model and taking a long time to get through a whole squad so we're going to do the sergeant um let me focus on that for you um pretty standard guy um haven't really put any extras on here i'm thinking about sort of tightening him up with a few little extra bits and bobs but um i'm not sure i'm going to do that i might just keep this squad quite plain quite simple um, and and do them on nice um, detailed bases instead. Uh, this guy's just armed up with uh, power sword, um, which you can see I've put sort of chips along the power sword to uh, give it a nice effect. Um, and also twin link uh, twin link bolter. I think these guys have rather than a storm bolter. Um, so kind of the next step that I do with these guys, nice and simple. I've sprayed them black. Um, I just take a bit of uh, lead belcher with a big dry brush. Um, just an old one that you're not really that bothered about but obviously it still needs to be quite clean um, a lot of people will tell me off for doing this but paint straight out of the pot put a bit on um, just dab away in one of your paint trays just to get get down to sort of a nice sort of empty brush but um, enough to still to still color things I'll just move that out of the way um, and then basically just work away at um, just dabbing dabbing rather than uh, brushing um, I always think that this gives a real nice sort of texture um, for silver. It looks kind of more like metal, if that makes sense, um, than than it would if it was sort of brushed and you end up with brush marks. Um, this way it kind of looks like it's, it's kind of hammered metal. Um, so I just get this one done. See, with the reason I use the big brush, obviously, is because it's so quick to get this base coat on. It's just literally a two-minute job to get it coated up. You can coat, a, you can sort of base coat a whole squad in, in like five minutes, you know. Uh, so just taking a little bit more, a little bit more paint out of the pot there, just to put, get some new paint on the brush. You need to keep it quite, quite fluid on the brush. A lot of people, if they're not as quick, like to just mix a little bit of water in with the paint. But I always think. On, on this uh, you can get it done so quick that you add water in and you just end up waiting longer for it to dry. Uh, just getting it done now. Getting a little bit more a little bit more paint. Yeah, a lot of people kind of think this is cheating a little bit, but um, hey, the whole game that I'm trying to, uh, the whole thing I'm trying to sort of do here for people is show you how you can get like a reasonably painted model in a short amount of time, you know, so that you can build yourself up an army um, that you can go and then play with 
and obviously still look pretty pretty decent you know so let's just get under those shoulder pads in there now I'm not going to do the bolter um, in silver because that's going to be uh, that's going to be black um, with silver parts so it'll, it'll just stay um, and I'll do that completely individual um, from the main body um, I am just coating the sword obviously the sword's going to be a nice silver um, with a few different layers of, of um, sort of dry brushing and, and weathering on that as well so nearly there now okay so I just pop the brush in the pot so I can show you this one so you see it's completely uh, coated in silver now so nice and quick now I would normally give it a couple of coats um, just so you can so you can see for now obviously coats nice and quick straight into it that's lead belcher that I've used there um, obviously the easiest uh, base silver to use now I'll wait for that to dry do another coat um, and I'll come back to you once that's done all right cheers bye hi guys back again um, so we've Coloured this one with uh, lead belcher now. I've done two coats, two coats of lead belcher, all over the model. Um, you'll see there, nice even coating of lead belcher. Um, next step that I'm going to take here is uh, null oil. Um, we're going to give the whole model a nice coat of that, quite a liberal coat. Um, obviously, we want quite a lot to go in all of the all of the recesses of the model. Um, now we are going to be um, layering up on this model. Uh, so obviously things like um, sort of a bit of excess or a drip mark from the known oil or something like that isn't really going to cause us too much grief so don't be too concerned about that just uh, the main the main task here is to get a nice thick um, a nice thick shade in all of the uh, the recesses all of the different armor panels things like that um, so you're just covering the whole model Make sure you get in all the sort of all the grooves of the armor, all the different um, all the different kind of plates and recesses, and the tubing, all of that sort of stuff. Get right in there. I do use quite a lot of known oil on this. Like I say, you want it to really sort of darken down, really shade in the lead belcher. So, brush is molting, it's always helpful. Time to get a new one. I'm just using the um, Games Workshop wash brush for this at the moment, so I always find I've tried quite a few different brushes, but. Um, I find the uh, the wash brushes and the large dry brush and that they're, they're actually quite good for the price you pay for them. Um, um, my detail brushes and things like that, I use the Windsor and Newton Series 7 brushes. The Kalinsky Sable Hair ones. I um, find that they, they do a really, really good job, really keep a nice point. Mm -mm. Nearly, nearly covered this whole thing. Just get a nice little bit inside the... Uh, rim of the helmet as well obviously let's uh, show you how far I'm getting along there so you see I'm giving it a right nice thick coat all over some of the model is um, going to be uh, obviously being painted over in blue as well for astral claws they have sort of blue shoulder pads things like that um, and these guys because I'm going to do these as a bit of an elite squad um, I know obviously Terminators are elite anyway, um, but these guys are going to be um, sort of almost like honour guard really. Um, these are going to be the only squad of Tartarus that we have in my army. Um, I'm going to get some uh, Cataphracti and uh, obviously the standard sort of the standard mark of Terminator armour as well. Um, so these guys are kind of got the most advanced armour, they're going to be the most sort of advanced and sort of up-to-date arm in the uh, in the army um, along with obviously the mark IV troops that i'm going to be doing as well so you see i've completely coated this now 
with uh, known oil. Now some people like to give quite a dirty effect. If you want to do a dirty effect then you can mix up known oil 50-50 um, with Agrax Earthshade um, and that gives you a real nice kind of um, sort of dirty sort of battlefield worn look um, personally. I just wear it silver, I just like the black so I'm just going to show you a nice close up here of the model so you see I've given it a real nice thick coating not really that bothered that there's kind of little bits of pooling and things like that because it's all going to be sort of trimmed over with uh, the next layer of silver anyway um, but you see on the back as well nice dark real thick coating all of the recesses are all shaded in so what, what I'll be doing next is waiting for this to dry um, and then I'll come back in part two of this video um, and show you how to do the next layer of silver up which will be uh, iron breaker. Okay guys, thanks for watching, see you soon.